Hi and welcome. This is Greg Justice with Scripter Publishing Group, and I've got a special guest with me today to talk about the legacy of Jack LaLanne. Uh, it is Bill Crawford, and Bill has been in the fitness industry since 1977. Uh, and he was actually personally trained by the late, great Arthur Jones, who you may know invented Nautilus and MedX. And uh, Bill has been featured on CNN, on Fox News, and in countless magazines and newspapers. Um, and he actually worked with the U.S. Navy, and that led to his, uh, uh, the development of his program called uh, Gym to Go, which is an app on iPhone, and you can uh, check it out on gymtogo.com. Uh, Bill has trained Hollywood celebrities, professional athletes, and everyday people, and was actually inducted into the National Fitness Hall of Fame in 2012. So, Bill, thank you very much for uh, joining me today to talk about the legacy of Jack LaLanne. Greg, thank you for having me, and thank you for the wonderful introduction. I really appreciate all that. Well, well I earned, say. I must say, well earned. So, let's start the interview. Um, I always like to start these with asking the first time you encountered uh, or were in the presence of Jack LaLanne, how that impacted you and influenced you throughout your career. Okay, you know, I was thinking about that. And I, for that, I can go way back into my early childhood years. Okay. The first time I encountered Jack LaLanne was in my mother's living room watching a black and white TV. And she and my aunt would um, do the exercises. I would follow along with them, and it was just great. And, it, you know, it got him off the couch. It got him moving, and they liked it. And Jack was so inspirational, the way, the way that he would get people involved in the program and talk to them. And that was my first encounter with him, my first live experience with him. And I actually had the pleasure of meeting him was in Los Angeles, the early, early 80s, I had just opened up a, one of the Nautilus clubs on Westwood Boulevard in Los Angeles. And we were having some, some kind of a, a get together, a promotion. And in comes Jack Lane and Terry Robinson. And, and of course we had a conversation, but I was new to the business and the business was unknown. Uh, the business wasn't really recognized. Exercise was still frowned on by a lot of people. You know, if you remember the medical uh, profession, they were suspicious of weight resistance exercise. They said it would make you muscle bound. Uh, your joints would wear out, the, the muscle would turn into fat, et cetera, et cetera. And my friends and family thought that I had gone off the deep edge. <laughs> they said, Bill, you need to get a real job. There's no future in this. And so I was, you know, I was, I was trying to balance all that out. And so in comes Jack Lane and he says, kid, he looked up at me. He said, kid, this time fitness is here to stay. And, it's, and you're on the right track. Stick with it. And that, that was just what I needed uh, because he was so enthusiastic and he was so powerful in his presence. And if you ever were in the same room with him, he just electrified the room. He had a, a special magnetism. Uh, and that was my encounter with Jack Lane. So now, was that totally out of the blue? You had no idea he was coming in? He just- I had no idea. I had wow. no idea. We were, we were having a promotion. We had some celebrities in there. We had uh, some uh, LA, uh, uh, sports celebrities in there mm -hmm. and the place was jam-packed and they it was a Saturday they must have been doing something and Terry Robinson we knew pretty well and so he must have mentioned let's stop by this Nautilus Club and uh, I'm glad they did because it was a moment that I never forgot. Wow well, yeah that's that's incredible did you have other encounters with Jack other stories that you might want to share? You know, I did not have any other encounters with him. I wish I had, uh, but I was, you know, I was going in one direction. He was going in another. Sure. He spent most of his time up in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. But I, I do know some stories about Jack. And probably Please share. One of the ones that, that I think he gets a lot of, should get a lot of credit for. And uh, Elaine, his wife, who I know that you know, she's a mm -hmm. wonderful woman. Mm -hmm. uh, when you and uh, Debbie and I were up at the uh, National Fitness Hall of Fame induction ceremony a couple of years ago, we all had a nice chance to visit with her and with uh, their son, John. But he got Elaine to quit smoking back in the day <laughs> when smoking was very fashionable. And when they first met, I guess she was walking around with a cigarette 
And with well, his background, which was already well established, <laughs> he started grinding on her and it became a real issue and she quit smoking. Well, so I think- Hey, Bill, think, the, the, the caveat of that story is she told me that she had the cigarette in one hand and a donut in the other. A donut, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he saw through the smoke and the donut and he ended up falling in love with her and marrying her and they had a wonderful life together yes indeed so, they did 52 year marriage that's terrific that's terrific well the, the other one that i that, that comes to mind is the uh we've all heard of the smith machine yes, uh, yes i've got one in here i'm looking at it right now we've all have smith machines mm -hmm. the smith machine should have been called the lolaine machine mm -hmm. because he actually designed and made that for a guy named rudy smith yep who was uh, the, the CEO, the principal in Chicago Health Clubs. Mm -hmm. And it's not the Smith machine, it's the Jack Lane machine. Yep, and he that is correct. It. And then one other thing that I, I had forgotten all about this, and, and I was listening to you know, one of the other stories and I thought, by golly, Jack Lane built health clubs. And there were a bunch of them in Los Angeles, and I actually bought one of them. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't know that. Yes, I, 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 I had totally forgotten that I had one. It was out, <laughs> it was out in uh, Chatsworth. We didn't, it wasn't called Jack Lane's anymore, but it was the cookie cutter. Uh -huh. You know, it had the, the sales offices up front, the, the, the wet area with the pool. It had the exercise room and the equipment and so on and so forth. But uh, it was pretty interesting. And he was so far ahead of his time oh. in so many yeah. different areas. And, you know, the way that he was able to engage people, make the connection between fitness and health. And I, I'm sure you know this. I don't know if everybody else knows this, but Jack Lane was a chiropractor. Yes. And having that, that education and the uh, knowledge of in, in, in anatomy and the musculoskeletal system really gave him the deep knowledge that he needed, but he had a way of articulating it and breaking it down and making it real simple for folks to do. And uh, I think I'm bleeding into the next, uh, the next check, uh, question that you were gonna ask me, so. Well, yeah, let's, let's go right into it. The let's next right question is really about legacy and what, in your opinion, what is Jack's legacy, not only in our industry, obviously there is legacy there without question, but beyond just our industry to the world in general. Okay, so this, this brings to mind, and, and you're in this story. Okay, you might remember a couple of years ago, maybe it's longer than that, Greg, we're getting old and the time goes by fast. <laughs> but you and I went to Washington DC together yes. and we were representing the National Fitness Hall of Fame at the Surgeon General's Council on the Step It Up program. Mm -hmm. And if you remember their goal, their mission was they were targeting the most sedentary right. segments of our population. And they said, if we can just get them off the couch, if we can just get them off the couch and get them walking, then doing anything is better than doing nothing at all. Right. So getting them off the couch was their goal. And I thought, my God, you know, Jack Lane did this decades ago. He put himself in people's living rooms when he recognized that there was a problem and the TV sets were taking over the world and it was encouraging a sedentary lifestyle, he got people off their couches and to exercise right in their living rooms. And he didn't do it by shaming them, scolding them. Right. He did it by, by his masterful ability to encourage and motivate people. And I think that's his legacy. He showed people like you and I that there was a pathway out there right. to do this as a career to have a job where you're actually out there in the world, encouraging people to exercise, teaching people how to exercise and making the world a better place, even with one person at a time. And I think that's his greatest legacy right there. Absolutely, and that's why they, he is called the godfather of fitness without question, without question. Well, that kind of leads into my, uh, my next question. If, if you were to describe Jack LaLanne in three words, what would those three words be and why? You know, I'm sure all the good ones have been taken and we can all call him, you know, king of fitness, father of exercise, blah, blah, blah. But I'm gonna call him the supreme couch evictor. That's a good one. I you like that. Original, that's original. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to write that one down, supreme. Couch, couch evictor, evictor. <laughs> and, and that's people off of their couches yes. and 
Absolutely. That, that is terrific. But that's, that's a good one. Supreme couch of victory. <laughs> and you get the award for being original on that one. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, as we wrap up the interview, Bill, is there anything else you would like to share uh, about Jack or say about him just uh, as we wrap up? You know, I hope that this book leads to a movie mm -hmm. because we've had films about, you know, other people and other endeavors and the things they've done and the contributions they've made. Jack LaLanne made a huge contribution to our country. He basically planted the seeds for an industry now that has impacted millions and millions of not just Americans, but people around the world. And he's made this country a better place. He's made it stronger. You know, he was a real patriot. He was really strong on ideals and morals. And he was, those were woven into his exercise programs. If you, you know, remember if you've watched any of them. And I just think that we should never forget Jack Elaine. Right. And yeah. I want to thank uh, Elaine and John for uh, taking that mission and, and moving it forward because with the work that they're doing and the work that you're doing, thank you very much for this. Um, you're keeping Jack's uh, memory alive. And I really appreciate that. Well, no, I, I appreciate you saying that. And that is the mission is to further his legacy, to introduce Jack to a whole new generation of not just trainers, but to the world. And, exactly. uh, you know, there's a certain uh, demographic population that only remember Jack as the juicer guy on late night television. Right. But yeah. he is so much more than that. And we're going to introduce the world to who Jack was and is to us in the industry. 